What purpose does the gentlewoman from Pennsylvania seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and pass uh, S-227. The clerk will report the title of the bill. Senate 227, an act to direct the Attorney General to review, revise, and develop law enforcement and justice protocols appropriate to address missing and murdered Indians and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentlewoman from Pennsylvania, Ms. Scanlon, and the gentleman from North Dakota, Mr. Armstrong, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Pennsylvania, Ms. Scanlon. I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on the bill under consideration. Without objection, so ordered. I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentlewoman is recognized. S-2227, Savannah's Act, responds to the epidemic of missing and murdered Native Americans. This crisis is appalling and threatens millions of innocent people living both on tribal lands and beyond. This bill is a bipartisan effort introduced by Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski and passed by the Senate by unanimous consent last March. I want to especially commend the leadership of Representative Norma, uh, Norma Torres, who introduced the House Companion in 2019 and has been a constant champion for Savannah's Act here in the House. The available data indicates that violence against Native Americans is particularly high. In some tribal communities, Native American women experience murder rates that are more than 10 times the national average. This is unacceptable. Savannah's Act is named in honor of Savannah LaFontaine Greywind, a member of the Spirit Lake tribe who vanished from her apartment in Fargo, North Dakota while eight months pregnant. Eight days after she disappeared, her body was found wrapped in plastic in the Red River. This legislation empowers tribal governments with the resources and information necessary to respond to cases of missing or murdered Native Americans like Savannah and to increase the collection of data in such cases. It also increases coordination and communication among the federal, state, and tribal officials responsible for investigating these cases in a variety of ways. This legislation provides best practices in conducting searches for missing persons on and off Native American land, establishes standards on the collection, reporting, and analysis of data and information on missing persons and unidentified human remains, and will lead to the culturally appropriate identification and handling of human remains identified as Native Americans. Savannah's Act provides guidance on which law enforcement agency is responsible for inputting information into databases, guidance on improving agency response rates and follow-up to cases of missing and murdered Native Americans, and guidance on ensuring access to culturally appropriate victim services. Lastly, and most importantly, Savannah's Act adds two new purpose areas to two existing grant programs administered by the Justice Department, specifically allowing grantees to use funds to implement policies, protocols, and training for law enforcement regarding cases of missing or murdered Native Americans, and to compile and report data to the Attorney General. In short, this important legislation will help address the alarming cases of missing and murdered Native Americans in a robust and effective way. I strongly urge my colleagues to support it, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman from Pennsylvania reserves the gentleman from North Dakota is recognized. I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in support of uh, S-227, Savannah's Act. Savannah's Act is named after Savannah, Savannah LaFontaine Greywind, a 22-year-old member of the Spirit Lake tribe who was murdered in my district in August of 2017. Her disappearance in murder devastated the community and the entire state of North Dakota. Tragically, Savannah was found dead eight days after she was reported miss missing. But thankfully, her baby was found alive, despite being cut from Savannah's womb. Savannah's story brought to light the fact that the data regarding missing and murdered indigenous women, particularly women and girls, is scattered across various government databases, if it even exists at all. Savannah's heartbreaking story, unfortunately, is not unique. A woman named Olivia Lone Bear disappeared from the Fort Berthold Reservation just a month later on October of 2017. She was found in a submerged truck in Lake Sakakawea in July of 2018. 
These are just two recent examples from my state. There are hundreds more across the nation. Savannah's Act will begin to help to address this crisis of missing and murdered Indigenous people. The bill will establish guidelines and best practices for law enforcement agencies across the country. It will also improve coordination amongst those agencies. Finally, it will enhance reporting, record keeping, and communication for law enforcement and families of victims. This legislation is needed because Native American and Alaska Native women face a murder rate 10 times higher than the national average. Shockingly, 84% of women in these communities experience some form of violence in their lifetime. The rural nature of most Native American communities, increased levels of poverty and addiction, and other circumstances pose unique challenges. Because of outdated, outdated databases and lack of coordination between law enforcement agencies, there is no reliable way of knowing how many Indigenous women actually do go missing each year. Savannah's Act addresses this disturbing increase in missing and murdered Native American women by creating new guidelines for investigation of these cases and by incentivizing the implementation of these new guidelines. I urge my colleagues to join me in supporting S227 and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from North Dakota reserves, the gentleman from uh, Pennsylvania is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield five minutes to the gentlelady from California, Ms. Torres. Uh, the, gentleman, the gentlewoman from California, Ms. Torres, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I thank uh, my colleague for yielding me this time. Uh, I stand here today in honor of Savannah LaFontaine Greywind and the Native American women missing and murdered with no justice in sight. Savannah was just 22, a member of the Spirit Lake tribe. She was eight months pregnant and expecting her baby any day when she was murdered in August of 2017. A neighbor in her apartment building lured her next door, attacked her. When her body was found, the coroner could not determine if the cause of death was the loss of blood from the vicious wounds on her body or strangulation from the rope around her neck. Instead of getting to hold her brand new baby in her arms and imagining a bright future for herself and her little one, Savannah's future was cut short. Savannah's death shines a light on a horrific reality in this country where Native American women face a murder rate 10 times higher than the national average. The st statistics should shock everyone listening to this debate. 84% of Native women experience some, so, some form of violence in their lifetime, 84%. Think of your 50 closest friends and family members. And now imagine 42 out of those 50 experiencing some type of violence. We cannot stand silent. We stand together, heartbroken, disgusted, and horrified but we cannot stand back and do nothing. I introduced the House version of the Savannah's Act to address the disturbing rates of missing and murdered Native American women. And I was very honored to have the opportunity to work with my good friend, Ms. Holland, and across the aisle with Mr. Newhouse on this bill. Also, with Senators Murkowski and Senator Cortez Masto, on the Senate version. We came together as Democrats and Republicans. We met many, many, many times to ensure that this was a bill that all of our colleagues could stand for in support and right a wrong for Native American women. To date, there is no reliable way of knowing how many Native women go missing each year because the databases that hold statistics of these cases are outdated. A lack of coordination between law enforcement agencies only adds to the confusion, and as a result, murderers get away with killing Native American women. This bill will finally ensure the Department of Justice, state and local law enforcement agencies, and our communities can work together to address this violence. Because of this bill, 
the Department of Justice will develop regionally appropriate guidelines for response to cases of missing and murdered Native Americans. And DOJ will provide training and technical assistance to tribes and law enforcement agencies for implementation of the developed guidelines. In addition, this bill will authorize grants to ensure that all members of our community are effectively working together to stop kidnapping and murdering of Native women. Native women have endured horrific rates of assault, rape, murder for far too long. And I hope this vote brings some closure to Savannah's family and the countless families, family members and Native communities who live with the pain of a lost loved one every day. Let me be clear, it is their unwavering advocacy that made this day a reality and an untold number of lives will be saved as a result. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. The gentlewoman yields, uh, the gentlewoman from uh, uh, Pennsylvania uh, reserves, the gentleman from North Dakota is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield 10 minutes to my good friend from Washington, Mr. Newhouse. The gentleman from Washington is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'd like to thank my good friend from North Dakota, Mr. Armstrong, for yielding some time today. Mr. Speaker, this is a monumental day. I'm proud to rise alongside my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to speak out in support of our legislation, which aims to address a crisis afflicting our nation, that of missing and murdered indigenous women. I hail from the state of Washington, and I'm very familiar with how Native American tribes are deeply integrated into the culture of the Pacific Northwest, as well as our whole country. I was raised just across the river from the Yakima Na Nation Reservation in central Washington. But I gotta say, I, like many others, was not aware of the disp disproportionate murder rate indigenous women suffer, 10 times the national average. At the end of the 2018, this crisis and the need for a solution was brought to me by the tribal communities that I represent. And I was made aware of just how devastating the shortfalls of our justice system are for North Native American and Alaska Native women and girls. While the statistics we have are absolutely staggering, and, have, and you've heard them, the facts of the matter are we don't even know the full extent of the crisis. In my home state of Washington, Native Americans make up about 2% of the state's population. But a recent report by the Washington State Patrol shows that indigenous women account for 7% of the state's reported missing women. The families of dozens of women still await answers as cases of missing or murdered indigenous women remain open or turn cold. Yet this crisis has gone on for decades with little to no action by the federal government. Complicated law enforcement jurisdictions have caused many problems throughout these investigations, and far too many tribal law enforcement agencies lack the re resources or access to critical databases to help solve these cases, which is why when Savannah's Act failed to receive a vote on the House floor in the 115th Congress, I was determined to bring forward solutions in order to get this bill signed into law. I was very proud to work with Representatives Torres and Holland and others in collaboration with tribes, the Department of Justice, and many others to improve upon that legislation. The product is a broadly bipartisan bill that has passed unanimously in both the House Judiciary Committee as well as the United States Senate. We work to create legislation that will bring focus to this crisis and improve the coordination between federal, state, local and tribal law enforcement agencies. This legislation aims to provide a sense of hope to the loved ones of these women by guiding, developing guidelines and best practices for tribes and law enforcement agencies across the country, by enhancing reporting and record keeping of crimes against indigenous women, and by improving communication between law enforcement and the families of these victims. This bill and this effort to bring awareness to the missing and murdered Native women across the country will go a long way to finally deliver justice to our communities. Tribes across the country, including those that I represent, have thrown their support behind this legislation. In fact, last year I walked along 
alongside the then chairman of the Yakima tribe, as well as Councilwoman Lottie Sam through the halls of Congress, visiting Chair Chairman Grijalva, Subcommittee Chairman Gallego, as well as Subcommittee Chairwoman Bass. These Yakima Nation officials traveled across the country, Mr. Speaker, more than 2,500 miles to advocate for the passage of Savannah's Act and other legislation to address this crisis. The bill is named, as you've, you've heard the story, in honor of Savannah LaFontaine Greywind, who was a 22-year-old member of the Spirit Lake tribe, pregnant with her first child, who was murdered in August of 2017. Since the introduction of Savannah's Act in the House, the remains of a Yakima Nation woman, Rosenda Strong, were found on the reservation. Her horrific murder today remains unsolved. Thankfully, justice was served upon Savannah's murderers. We owe the same justice to Rosenda and all of the missing and murdered indigenous women across this country. The passage of this bill today will demonstrate a long-awaited and necessary change. As I mentioned, this crisis has been going on for decades. Politicians on both sides of the aisle have promised action and failed to deliver. I've been asked, what's different now? Why do you think progress can be made? And I can honestly tell you, the main difference I've seen is that our Native communities are leading the charge. They've had enough and they no longer will suffer in silence. Throughout central Washington and across the country, the families of loved ones of thousands of missing or murdered indigenous women are awaiting justice. It is because of their voices and their strong advocacy that I'm here today, urging my colleagues throughout this legislative body to support passage of Savannah's Act. And finally, Mr. Speaker, finally we can send this legislation to President Trump's desk to be signed into law. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields. The gentleman from North, Carolina, uh, North Dakota uh, uh, reserves. The gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized. Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker, may I inquire whether uh, Mr. Armstrong has additional speakers? We do not. We're ready to close, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman is recognized. We are ready to close. All right. The gentleman is recognized to close. So, I, again, I want to say thank you to Ms. Torres, Mr. Um, Newhouse, and uh, my colleagues in the Senate, Senator Kramer, Senator Hoven. Uh, I have spoken, uh, this is not the first time in my short time in Congress that I've been on the floor talking about this bill. Uh, and I think it's also important to remember people who came before us. Uh, Senator Heitkamp was a champion of this in the last Congress. And through this process, we have gotten a more targeted and workable solution. Uh, this bill allows U.S. attorneys in Indian country more autonomy and authority. That is important to law enforcement. That is particularly important in missing cases. And I think it's also important to recognize that these don't always happen in rural areas or actually on the reservation. Savannah Graywind, while a member of the Spirit Lake tribe, uh, was in Fargo, North Dakota, the largest city in, our, in, in my state when this incident occurred. So uh, this is a good bill. It's been a long time coming, and I really appreciate everybody's hard work. And with that, I so recommend we pass it. And with that, I yield back. The gentleman from North Dakota uh, yields the balance ba back the uh, balance of his time. The gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized. Mr. Speaker, Savannah's Act is an important measure to ensure the safety of Native American women and men in communities across the United States. For all of the reasons discussed here today, we're so grateful to Representative Torres, Representative Newhouse, Representative Armstrong, Representative Holland for moving this legislation forward. I urge my colleagues to join me in supporting this bipartisan legislation, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentlewoman yields back the balance of her time. The question before the House is, will the House suspend the rules and pass Senate Bill 227? Those in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, two thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended. The bill is passed and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table.